Hi everyone. Welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about understanding reference architecture. Here is the agenda. In order to understand the reference architecture, first we, we observe what is a reference architecture and why reference architecture and finally HPE reference architecture. Before jump into the reference architecture definition, here is the one sample reference architecture diagram. If you see in this diagram, when we are proposing a, any solution architecture to customer, first of all, we should have a, a resource plane. A resource plane is nothing but a, our physical resources. If you see in this diagram, we have a HPE Green Lake bare metal service. We are providing a compute, some compute product, storage and also the network this is the physical resources on top of that we also included within our solution block we included vcf vcf means vmware cloud foundation and it can be used we, generally vcf will we can propose for a private cloud solutions so within a vcf we have a two compartments vcf management domain and vcf virtual infrastructure workload domain so within the management domain we have a key components stdc manager software defined data center manager and we have vCenter to manage multiple ESXi host and virtual machines and we have vSphere and we have a vSAN virtual SAN and we also have a network hyper hypervisor which is NSX. So on top we have a VI domain, virtual infrastructure workload domain, and then we can run our production virtual machines, data, and applications. In addition, if the customer require any additional capabilities, we will also provide HPE GreenLake Edge to Cloud Platform, and it is specifically for role-based access to the VMware tools and also for the billing purposes. And in addition, it will also allow you to do the capacity management and for the monthly billing using a consumption analytics. Or uh, it's a similar to the cloud uh, pay as you go model. Okay. And even if you see the legends here, the blue color one, wherever we highlighted the blue color, it is completely HPE managed services. And green color highlighted one specific to the workload domain, VMs, data and application is specifically for a customer managed. This is one reference architecture. There are plenty of reference architectures. So before jump into the definition, this is one quick overview how the architecture look like. And here is the definition. A reference architecture is a document or a set of documents that provides recommended structures and integration of IT products and services to form a solutions. And the, the reference architecture represents accepted industry best practices, typically suggesting the optimal delivery method for specific technologies. A reference architecture offers IT best practices in easy to understand format that guides the implementation of complex technology solutions. Suppose here in this diagram, we have a, another reference architecture, which is HPE reference architecture for Red Hat OpenShift container platform. So within the Red Hat OpenShift container platform, how we have a solution is Minimally, we required a compute resource, sir. How many compute resources we have here? Minimally six resources. That means control plane one, three master nodes. Master node, another name, control plane node. So we have a three master node and we also have a three worker nodes. Node one means server one, server two, server three. So if you see the server one, control plane node is a one unit server and the node one, node two, worker nodes are a two unit server. Okay, that means normally the production applications running on worker node, this worker node configuration compared to master node configuration is higher configuration. And to uh, all these bare metal servers, we require a storage. So storage, if you see here, per container applications, we are using a nimble storage is the persistent storage. And for to connect to our man to manage the servers remotely, we require a IL1 network, which is connected to HPE Aruba 6300M out of band bandwidth switch. Okay. When it comes to the production network, we are using HPE Aruba 8325 top of the rack switch TOR. Okay. 
and this is how the infrastructure is connected and we can also need a additional components to implement this OpenShift container platform. So we require either VM-based supporting infra, which includes the main roles are DNS, DHCP, and HA proxy. Once the deployment is completed, we can access this infrastructure using OCP portal. OCP means OpenShift container platform portal. And to connect, we can use admin user access like a cube admin and password. We can connect to this infrastructure. So this is how the reference architecture. So if you, when you see the reference architecture, we understand we need a six servers, we need one storage device, and we need a, some bash node and VM-based supporting infrastructure also needed. To communicate all this infrastructure server and storage we need a ILO connectivity for a physical server access and for production network access we need a switches okay so this is how the reference architecture but the what this reference architecture document is this document consists of all the server configuration detail storage configuration detail switch configuration detail what are all the additional components are needed all this information is documented in a reference architecture. So that's the reason we call it a set of document that provide recommended structure. If you see in this recommended structure, we need a for persistent storage purpose, we need a external storage. Even nowadays, HP also providing a Alatra storage. Alatra also, we have a different configurations, Alatra 4K model, 5K, 6K and 9k models so it depends on the customer requirement the similar reference architecture you can modify the storage okay and even the customer don't want a rack mode server these servers are a rack mode dl servers if the customer want a blade server just the nodes count is same we can replace the server, uh, rack mode servers with a synergy blade servers if you insert a synergy frame within a synergy frame you can insert a multiple compute nodes uh, that compute nodes we can divide for three compute node for master node and three compute node for a worker node this is how we can modify the architecture so even this all the more information about reference architecture now let's understand why reference architecture reference architectures help project managers software developers enterprise architects and it managers collaborate and communicate effectively about an implementation project okay that is the benefit of this document a reference architecture anticipates and answers the most common questions that arise as a result they help teams avoid errors and delays that may occur without the use of tested set of best practices and solution approaches. For example, we are proposing a solution for a private cloud solution. So within private cloud solution, there is a multiple solution blocks. This solution blocks includes physical layer. Physical layer means compute, storage, network. As I mentioned in the earlier diagram, we shown about rack mode servers, what is the storage model and also network model. This and all covers in under the physical layer. When it comes to virtual infrastructure layer within a private cloud solution, this architecture we should also focus on hypervisor, which hypervisor we are planning to use. Our hypervisor is let's say VMware ESXi and what version we are going to use. We are go Shall we go with the latest version 8.0 update one or we can go with the N-1 which is 7.0 update three. So it depends on the requirement and application compatibility, we should choose the relevant versions. And the pools of resources, virtualization, control and on the next layer is cloud management layer so within the cloud management layer we can configure service catalog this service catalog we can configure using a aria automation formally we call it as v relays automation and it will helpful for your self-service portal and also we can use v relays orchestrator or aria orchestrator we can use for your orchestration purposes apart from these three layers when we are providing a reference architecture there are additional key solution blocks which includes business continuity business continuity means it uh, highlights the key points fault tolerance and disaster recovery fault tolerance means it provides it zero downtime it's like a complete uh, infrastructure will be available the, in case of any maintenance or any disruption also there will be no impact to the production okay and disaster recovery and uh, we also maintain all virtual machines and container applications we must have a backup and restoration policies and replication methodologies 
this is all common in a business continuity and similarly another solution block is security when we proposing any solution architecture according to the reference architecture we can also implement security guidelines based on the company regulations governance risk and compliance and we should also maintain service management portfolio management and operation management operation management is nothing but a managed services what is our in other terminology we call it as day to operations okay and now let's talk about hpe reference architecture so until now i i mentioned about what is reference architecture and why reference architecture now i am going to talk about hpe reference architecture hpe publishes an extensive collection of reference architectures that reduces the complexity of planning designing and implementing infrastructure across many different workloads and infrastructure platforms here as we are aware when we are proposing a solution we have a terminology day 0 day 1 day 2 and so on day 0 means we call it as planning and designing and day 2 means implement day 1 means implementing sorry and day 2 means it's a operations so all these scenarios we can utilize our reference architectures okay to propose our solution and based on decades of hpe technical experience our reference architecture provide a repeatable best practices reference with fully tested and validated workload architectures allowing you to accelerate deployment time with less risk okay and generally these architectures which include specifically to the hpe edge to cloud platform uh, we call hpe green lake and we also have a different product types like super computing compute storage networking and we also have hpe software and services hpe software means hpe ilo one view and we also have a hpe esmeral and we also have hpe services like advisory and professional services managed services this all comes under the and we also have hpe cloud services and we also have product brands this product brands are hpe cray super computing proliant compute specifically for a under compute section and alatra storage for storage and aruba networking for no networking product type and ejmeral software for software hpe services and there are some future products as well hpe green lake for aruba green lake for block storage and green lake for private cloud enterprise and green lake for compute ops management green lake for disaster recovery and green lake for backup and recovery so when we observe a solution architecture generally it will cover all these items so but which item we have to choose and propose in our solution architecture is the key key okay so in order to do that one example is let's say if i log into the google uh, and you can just type hpe website hpe.com when you log into the hpe.com in a search if you are proposing any solution or reference architecture if you are looking for reference architecture you can just search for example vmware private cloud solution you can just type vmware reference architecture in directly in the hpe website when you type hpe reference architecture within your hpe website you can see there are multiple reference architecture results see there are 6708 results you can see hpe reference architecture for vmware cloud foundation on synergy so synergy is a better blade server and another one hpe reference architecture for vmware cloud foundation 4.4 on hpe synergy so specific version there is a reference architecture and hp reference architecture vmware cloud foundation on proliant dl servers here server models are about two models refers as a synergy and here it is refers as a dynamic link rack mount servers okay and similarly if you want to verify a open shift let's say you can type open shift reference architecture so you can find hpe reference architecture as well hpe reference architecture for red hat open shift on hpe proliant dl380 gen 10 and similarly another models also different models if you scroll down you can see similarly for different models as well hpe reference configuration for open shift container platform 4 on synergy so like this there are c4000 documents so these and all so if even uh, if you want to open and verify any document also you can just open any document for example i'm just opening a one document in a another tab 
HPE reference architecture for Red Hat OpenShift on HPE Prolian DL385 Gen 10 Plus version 2. And there is another model, Prolian DL325. If you have a 325 means it's a AMD motherboard. If you have a DL380 means it's a Intel motherboard. That is the difference of 0 and 5. Okay. Suppose there is a document. This is the one only I mentioned as reference architecture means document. It includes all the information, solution information. So let me download this document. So once we download, we can just open and observe what is the details available in this document. Let me maximize the, you see, if you see here, rapid deployment on HPE Prolian servers using Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform version 4.9. And this document have a, all the information of solution layout, solution components, capacity sizing, best practices, deployment overview, and including some additional OpenShift features. And finally, bill of materials, form. okay? And the reference links also available. If you see here, this is the solution overview, Red Hat OpenShift container platform. We have a web UI, web user interface and to deploy OpenShift cluster, we need a bootstrap node and also we need a installer machine and we need load balancer. We require three master node, three worker nodes. Okay. So, and we also have solution layout and this solution layout physically we need one storage. And if you want to need any data fabric product, we can propose HP Esmeral data fabric and we can propose HP data foundation as well to configure a ODF external model for the specifically for the persistent volume options. And coming to the Red Hat OpenShift container platform cluster, we need a three master node, three worker nodes. Okay. If you see three to five lower model, we are preferring for master node and higher model we are recommending for worker nodes. This is how the architecture and this architecture have in addition, there are additional details, virtualized configuration. Suppose if you want to propose for a virtualized configuration, how the architecture and even the how it is looks like in a rack. When we place this servers in a rack, this is how the solution rack layout. Okay. And this is how it's a 38 pages document. When you get spare time, you can just go through any of this spare document. Uh, These are all the reference architecture. Not only HP site, even if you verify in the VMware website and even Microsoft site also, you can just search reference architecture. You will find there so many reference architectures. Just click on search, enter. There will be so many reference architecture. Same as in HPE website, even our other partner websites, VMware site, Microsoft site, and AWS site also. You see, there are so many reference architecture diagrams. Okay. This is all for vSAN, multi cloud reference architectures, and also NSX architectures and all. We even we can see for a VMware cloud and AWS reference architecture. Okay. And the resource specific resources for reference architectures. So that is the importance of a reference architecture. Hope you understand the importance of a reference architecture and you can go through based on your solution proposal, the specific reference architectures you can verify from the respective websites like HP website or AWS, Azure, Microsoft site or VMware site or Red Hat site. Okay. These are all the, some examples I given for your better understanding. That's it. Thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share, and subscribe to the Gnan Cloud Garage channel. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.